Thank you. Perfect. Hi, I'm Alex. Um, and uh, I'm here representing a really awesome team, uh, Santa Cruz, born and bred. Um, some of them are right there. Um, and um, what we do is something somewhat boring. On first, on first glance, <laughs> supply chains are kind of boring. You buy things, you sell things, you know, you ship things, and nobody wants to worry about them until things break, right? <laughs> until something is wrong, nobody knows about the procurement manager, nobody knows about the supply chain manager, <laughs> until there is a story in the New York Times that says that um, there are slave children in a supply chain three, four tiers down the chain from the actual manufacturer, or there's a factory collapse, right? And um, up until fairly recently, those stories would come out, right? The Nike slave labor story from the 90s, but it wasn't really, nobody really cared about it. Um, and in the last five years, people did start caring about it. One of the key reasons is that over 50% of today's consumer dollars are spent by millennials or younger. That Rubicon was crossed in 2014, and by 2020, it's going to be 60%. And millennials are really, really receptive to marketing. And so brand image is equivalent to self-image in millennial consumers. So when a brand image suffers, consumers dump it. So um, there are lots of different imperatives for trying to figure out what's wrong in your supply chains and trying to fix them. Some of them are moral, and some of them are commercial. And as a matter of fact, right now, the spread between consumers preferring ethical brands to status brands is 20%. So 20% more consumers prefer ethical brands to status brands, both in developing and developed countries. And of course, companies come out with commitments, and they say, we're going to eliminate slave labor, we're going to eliminate deforestation, we're going to eliminate, we're going to work on certain issues in our supply chains, and that's all great because they want to engage with their suppliers, they want to improve, and all great. Except that there is a challenge. To figure out exactly who is in your supply chain, what they're doing, and where are the hotspots and how you can improve, is a major data problem. Again, somewhat boring, but it gets exciting. Um, so this is where we focus. So we started in, Santa Cruz, uh, we actually got our start at the 2012 uh, tech raising uh, down in the Cruz IO building, where me and my co-founder went and tried to recruit our first developer because we had no idea how to build software. We came from a consulting background and an academic background, and um, we said, there is this problem that we're seeing that we need to figure out, and it's a lot of data, and right now what's happening is people are patting themselves on the back for collecting Excel spreadsheets with information because it takes so long to figure out who's in your supply chain, what they're doing, that you end up with a giant pile of spreadsheets and then you, when your annual report comes along, you report on, we collected information. Very good. Except it's not information because most of those Excel spreadsheets, as my team will tell you, don't actually contain information because it's incomplete, it's dirty, and you can't actually act on it. And what we want to do is give people the tools, and right now uh, we've got Fortune 500 companies doing everything from timber and pulp traceability to labor to <coughs> coffee, sugar, palm oil, etc. commodity tracing all the way down, uh, giving them the tools to understand who and what is in their supply chain. And then helping their suppliers understand what's going on, where they rank, and how they can improve. Giving clear dashboards as to what's going on and where they need to focus. And giving 
the reach all the way to the field, uh, the furthest deployment of our offline data app is in Rwanda, uh, working with 5,000 female smallholder coffee farmers to figure out how to grow more responsible coffee and uh, increase incomes for coffee farmers. Um, and the key for us is to make this a step rather than the goal, because this is really the goal, is production of more responsible goods. The key for us is the next step, which is that supply shift is going to be on the dashboards on the computers of every single person that's touching supply chain, be it a procurement manager, be it a responsible sourcing manager, be it a risk manager, be it a CFO, so that what you get is a full visibility across issues. And the cool thing is it's a network so that companies can actually collaborate on issues like deforestation, on issues like slave labor, um, all within one platform. And um, this way we can put <coughs> the right information in the, right, in the hands of the right people so that um, sourcing managers, so that procurement officers, so that large Fortune 500 companies can actually make better decisions and altogether the industry can move toward more responsible products. What we're looking for are folks to help with marketing. So if there are marketing consultants, marketing, uh, marketing folks in the audience, I would love to talk to you afterwards um, because We've been carrying the message through conferences and lots of other ways, and it's a network product, so our customers are really good advocates, but we'd love to expand. With that, I'll take questions. <laughs>